Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. This is um, a question, question number 10 from the May, June 2020, 0580, paper 4, variant 1, the Cambridge IGCSE paper. And this is question 10, part A, about a rhombus ABCD, which has a diagonal of AC, where A is a point negative 310, and C is a point 4, negative 4. And part one of this question is asking us to find the length of AC. So the part one of the question doesn't really require us to use any um, of the ideas or any of the concepts um, based upon it being a rhombus, okay? Because it just says find the length between A and C. These are two points. We just need to use um, the length formula to find the length between these two points. So when we have these two points, I'll just make a little diagram to illustrate what's going on. Okay, I mean, we don't have to do this in, in the exam. You, know, you don't want to be wasting time. But say the point A would be here, 3, minus negative 3 and 10. And the point C would be like at 4 and minus 4, somewhere like, say, over here somewhere. Okay, this is just, <coughs> just a little sketch just to give you an idea. So say the line was going from that point to that point, <clears throat> that's the point A and that's the point C. All right, and this is the point 4 and negative 4. Okay, now, um, what we're doing when, we, when we're using the length formula is we're basically doing the following. We're using Pythagoras' theorem. That's what we're doing. Okay, so what we're doing is this. Let me just, just change this a little bit. We're finding the distance between the x values of A and the difference between the y values of A and C. And what that does is it gives us like this right angle triangle. So the length formula basically is this. If you want to find the distance between the points A and C, then you find the square root of, you're going to have the x value of A minus the x value of C squared plus the y value of A minus the y value of C all squared <clears throat> and that basically is what we're doing here is we're basically finding x a minus x c will give you this distance here which is going to be 3 plus 4 which is 7 and y a minus y c will give you this distance here which is basically minus 4 to 10 which is 14 and so we're using Pythagoras' theorem to find what a c is yeah because this is like a right angle because it's like the the y and this is like the the um, x Okay, x equals something, this is y equals something. So this is using Pythagoras' theorem. That's what this formula is all about, basically. So that's the understanding behind the formula. Okay, you don't have to draw this, you don't have to show this, you can just use the formula, but it's always good to know what a formula actually is, where it comes from, not just memorize it like a parrot and just do the questions like a machine. Understanding where it comes from will help you in many different types of questions, especially when you get some algebraic type of questions sometimes, it requires a bit of a deeper understanding. Okay, so x a minus x c is going to be minus 3 minus 4. So you're going to have negative 7, but of course that's going to be squared. And then you're going to have 10 minus, and you're going to have minus 4, which is going to give you 14. So it's going to be the square root of 7 squared plus 14 squared. So the square root of, I mean, you could just put it straight in your calculator like this if you want to. It's absolutely no problem. Minus 3 minus 4. Close the bracket and square it, plus, and then you have 10 minus minus 4, 10 minus, you can even put it like this, it will still work, and then you put squared, and that should give you your answer, which is, the, the calculator comes out 7 root 5, 7 times root 5. Now, this is counted as, you know, not an exact answer, because this is a number that will have to be rounded if you write it down, if you try to write it down, it's going to have to be rounded. So, all non-exact answers should be given to three significant figures. So I have to press this button, S to D, and round it to three significant figures, which gives you 15.7. So it gives you 16 point, 15, sorry, 0 0 0.652. 15.652. 15.652, let me just neaten that up a bit. 6.52, which we round to 3SF, which gives you 15.7 units. They don't give a unit here, so you can just write 15.7, that's fine. So that's part A. It's actually a very short question. I just went into a bit of an explanation to help you understand where this formula for the length between 
uh, two points comes from, comes from Pythagoras' theorem, basically. Then it says, show that the equation of the line AC is y equals minus 2x plus 4. All right, so now, the equation between these two points, we have to show that the equation is minus 2x, um, y equals minus 2x plus 4. All right, in order to do that, to find the equation of a straight line, we need two things. We need to know the gradient of the line, and we need to know any point on the line. Now, the equation of the line AC is, um, you know, the line AC goes through these points, minus 3, 10, and 4, and minus 4. So I can use either of them. So let me just choose the point C. Okay, it goes through this point. All right, what we need to find now is the gradient of the line AC. The gradient of the line AC, um, if I find that, then I can find the equation of this line. So the gradient of a line is the change in y over the change in x. So we can see it's going to be a negative 14 over 7, but we'll just do it from the, from the points. It's like yA minus yC over xA minus xc. So the change in y, so you can say 10 minus minus 4, 10 minus minus 4, over the change in x, which is negative 3, take away 4, which is 14 over negative 7, which gives you negative 2. So we can see the gradient is equal to negative 2. So we've got that, and now we have the point on the line. So we can use, there's two different methods that people use for this. There's a method that I prefer, which is basically where you use, which most students in IGCSE actually don't really like this way. So I'll show you the way that most of the IG students actually deal with it. They use the formula, the general formula for the straight line, y equals mx plus c. Okay, and they say, okay, we know m is minus 2, and we have this point on the line. We also have that point. We could use either of them. <laughs> so let's use the x from here and the y from there. That's 4 is the x value. When, when x is 4, y is neg <coughs> negative 4. So we can substitute these three values into here and find what c is. So we have minus 4 instead of y, negative 2 instead of m, 4 instead of x plus c. That gives you negative 4 equals, this is going to give you negative 8 plus c. So we have to add 8 to both sides. So minus 4 plus 8 equals c. So we can say that therefore, let's just move this down a bit, c is equal to minus 4 plus, eight, 4 plus 8, which is which is 4. So therefore, we can say the gradient of the line is minus 2x plus 4 as required. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to use a formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and again, you could use either of these two points as your point. Now, in this formula, your gradient would be still negative 2, but your point would be the x1, y1. So let's, let's, choose, um, let's choose the other point just to show that you get the same answer. Let's choose minus 3, 10. Minus 3, 10. Okay, we'll so show we'll end up with the same answer. Now, in this case, this is x1 and this is y1. So you have y minus y1, which is 10, equals m, which is negative 2, times x minus minus 3, which gives you x plus 3. Okay, x, you're going to have x minus minus 3, which is x plus 3. Then if you, if you expand that bracket, you get minus 2x minus 6. You have to add 10 to both sides. So you have y equals minus 2x minus 6 plus 10, which gives you y equals minus 2x minus 6 plus 10 is plus 4. Exactly the same answer. And if I had used the point minus 4 minus 4 in here, I would have also got the same answer as well. Okay, and just to show you, to make, make you understand, if I'd used 4 minus 4, I'd have y minus minus 4, which would be y plus 4, equals m, which is minus 2, times x minus 4. Okay, so it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And you'll have <coughs> y plus 4 equals minus 2x plus 8. And then you have to subtract 4 from both sides. You have minus 2x and 8 minus 4 is 4. So you get the same answer. And even here, if we had used here um, the other point, minus 310, in this in this equation here, we would have got the same thing. So instead of y, we'd have put y, uh, 10. Instead of m, we'd put minus 2. Instead of x, we'd put minus 3 and plus c. So we'd have 10 equals 6 plus c. So 10 minus 6 is 4. So we'd end up with c equals 4. So we'd have y equals minus 2x plus 4. So whichever points you use, 
whether you use this method or use that method, you will still get the same answer. Okay, so I just uh, showed you a few different methods in order for you to understand what's going on there. Then it says, find the equation of the line BD. So now we have to think about this being a rhombus. A, B, C, D, diagonal A, C. Okay, so I'm going to draw a rhombus here. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have these shapes here which I can use. So a rhombus looks something like this. Okay, I can try and make it look like the sides are the same. All right. So a rhombus would be something like this where all the sides are the same length but not the angles Okay, the opposite angles are the same, but they're not like a square where all the angles are 90 degrees. Okay, now, the diagonal, the rhombus is A, B, C, D, where A, C is a point A, and where A is a point uh, minus 3, 10, and C is a point 4, minus 4. So I, I, I'm, what I'll do is I'll just make this the diagonal then, because it looks like similar to what we've drawn there. So I'll make the diagonal go like this, between these two points. Okay, that's the diagonal. That will be A, C. So that's what we just used, A, C. So A and C, so let's say A, B, C, D. Normally you go clockwise in order. That's what, how you normally would show <coughs> the points of a um, polygon. Okay, now um, we have to find the equation of the line BD. So we know, the, we know that the point A is minus 3, 10. That's negative 3 and 10. And the point B is 4 and minus 4. We've got to find the equation of the line BD. Okay, so... The equation of the line which is going like this now this is where we have to know some of the properties of a rhombus okay so the properties of the special quadrilaterals we need to know some of them for us to answer this question now one of the things that we should know about a rhombus is that the diagonals in a rhombus they intersect at right angles okay that's one thing and the other thing is that the diagonals in a rhombus they bisect each other that means they cut each other into two equal halves so this length and that length will be the same as will this length and this length okay they'll be the same as each other that's longer than this one but this part from the point where they meet let's call that point m capital m that's the midpoint <laughs> that's the midpoint right where the two diagonals intersect now that point here cuts bd and ac in half so we already know that the equation of the line AC, the equation of AC, the equation of AC is y equals minus 2x plus 4. And we know that the equation of the line BD, okay, the equation of BD, the gradient of BD, okay, the gradient of BD is going to be, because it's perpendicular, the negative reciprocal of the gradient of AC. Okay, we don't have to even know the points here. We just know <coughs> that it's the negative reciprocal of this because when two lines are perpendicular, then the gradients are negative reciprocals. All right, so you take the gradient of AC, you change its sign, and you flip it upside down. So you have minus 2, which you can think of as a minus 2 over 1. So that becomes, you, you change the sign, it's going to be positive, and you flip it upside down, so it's going to become a half. Okay, it's going to become a half. This is the perpendicular gradient to minus 2. So this is going to become a half. The gradient of BD is a half. Now we need to have a point on the line BD. Now we weren't told what A, uh, the, what the point B was, nor were we told what the point D was. Okay, so we don't know what these points are. All right, however, what we do know is that this point M is on the line BD. Okay, <clears throat> and this is the midpoint of AC. So the midpoint of AC lies on BD. And we need to know a point on BD. So the midpoint of AC, M, we can, I'll call it M, because we just named it M. M lies on BD. And we can say M is the midpoint, M is the midpoint of <laughs> AC. And to find the midpoint, to find the midpoint between two points, we basically, what we have to do, is we have to find the average of the x and y coordinates. So to find the midpoint of AC, okay, the midpoint of AC, I call it capital M, so the small m for the gradient, we're going to add together the x coordinates, which is minus 3 and 4, divide by 2. And add together the y coordinates, which is 10 plus minus 4, which is 10 minus 4, and divide by 2. That will give me the point, which is the midpoint of AC, which is the point M. That's going to give you 
4 minus 3, which is 1, which is going to be 1 over 2, which is a half, and 10 minus 4, which is 6, 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So that is the midpoint of AC. So now we have the two things that we need. We have the gradient of AC, which is a half, and we have a point on the line, which is M, which is a half and 3. So we can use, again, either of the two formulas. I'll show you both ways because I know a lot of students like this particular method here. Y equals MX plus C. So Y is the Y coordinate of the point we know, which is 3. M is the gradient, which is a half. X is the X coordinate, which is a half. Okay, so a half times a half plus C, which is what we have to find. So this gives you 3 equals 1 over 4 plus C. So C is going to be 3 minus a quarter. So C is going to be, now 3 minus a quarter is like um, 12 over 3. 12, sorry, 3 is like 12 over 4 minus 1 over 4, which is 11 over 4. That's, that's going to give you answer 11 over 4. Because this is like 12 over 4 minus 1 over 4, which is 11 over 4, which is the same as 2 and 3 quarters. Okay, so that's what C is. So we can say Y equals MX, so it's a half x plus 11 over 4. We can write our answer in that way if we want. We can also use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x <coughs> minus x1. And we have y minus the y value, which is 3, okay, equals m, which is a half times the x value. So it's x minus a half. So that it's x minus the x value x minus x1. In this formula, x1 and y1 represent the point, and y and x are stay as the variables. So you have x minus a half, so we can again um, multiply through by that a half, so we have y minus 3 equals a half, x minus a quarter, add 3 to both sides, we'll end up y equals a half, x, you have minus a quarter plus 3, which is the same as this, which gives you plus 11 over Four. So this is another alternative way of finding the answer. Now, they just said write down or find the equation of the line BD. We could have also found the equation <coughs> um, in the end. We could have written it in another form if you wanted to. We could have multiplied everything by 4. And you have 4y equals 2x plus 11. You could have written it down in that form if you wanted to, having everything as integers. That's also perfectly fine. So there's not just one way of writing the equation of the line, but in general, that's what they would probably expect you to write as your final answer. So there's a couple of different methods you could use, as I mentioned. Okay, in this case, we don't have any other choice except to use this point, because that's the only point we know on the line BD. Okay, so we use the fact that the rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and that they bisect each other. That fact, those two facts about a rhombus was what we needed in order to find the equation of the line BD. Without knowing those facts, you wouldn't have been able to find the line BD because we don't know what the uh, point B nor the point D are. Okay, so that's very important for you to understand that. Very, very important. Okay, that the, <coughs> the properties of the special quadrilaterals is something that we should know. How, you know, what, what um, the properties of a rhombus are, what properties of a kite are rectangles squares and so on okay so it's important for us to know those special properties for us to be able to answer such questions now the next question on this paper is um, about a different topic which is to do with turning points and differentiation so it's like a bit of a different topic from part a so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do part b on a separate video then I can categorize them according to their topic as well. And so the part B of this video will be found. Okay, I'll put a link to the next video, to the part B, at the end of this, um, somewhere over around, I guess, over here. I'll put a link to the next video, part to the next part of this question, part B. I'll also put this, um, a link over here to the rest of the paper, this, this paper 4-1, um, from May, June 2020. And I'll also put a link here to the topic of straight line graphs. Okay, and I'll also put a link somewhere else. There'll be maybe another link to um, the topic of um, special quadrilaterals as well. Okay, uh, geometry and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll put links to those in at the end of the video. So you can then maybe navigate to things that you might find related to this video. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope everything was clear and see you soon.